In the early 1600s, Kepler deduced three laws of planetary motion. And I'm going to cover each law in a separate video. So this will be Kepler's first law. Uh, planets move in elliptical orbits around the sun, and the sun occupies one focus of the ellipse. So we have uh, this diagram from Wikimedia Commons posted by Ivan T. We have S prime and S uh, positions marked here. Those would be the foci position. Um, and we have the sun at one focus, and the other focus is empty. There is no other sun in our solar system. So we have the sun here, the main body of our solar system. And the uh, full length from aphelion, or sorry, from perihelion, you label that, to aphelion, that's the major axis from peri perihelion, perilous, close to the sun, to aphelion, far away from the sun. That's the full major axis. And half of that distance is the semi-major axis that we label with A. I'm going to put an A over on this side. So from the center to one uh, edge of the uh, long axis, that would be our uh, semi-major axis. There's also A on the other side from the center to the aphelion position. Then there's another uh, distance that uh, is useful in ellipses. That would be C, the distance from a focus to the center. So right here, distance of the focus to the center. And that's all the drawing I'll do on this diagram so I don't uh, clutter it up. Then we can classify an ellipse as to how elliptical it is with the eccentricity of the ellipse. And that uh, can be calculated if you have the number for C, the distance from the focus to the center, and divide by the semi-major axis, half of the long axis of the ellipse, that would give you the value for the eccentricity. For the case of a circle, the two foci are at the same position, at the center. And consequently, C is a zero. The value of C is zero for a circle. And the eccentricity would then be zero, zero divided by whatever the size of the circle is. As the ellipse becomes squashed down and more stretched out, it turns out that the value for C approaches the value for A, and the eccentricity becomes 1. It's never 1. If the, if the, uh, for the case of a parabola, we would have the situation where C and A could be considered to be the same. We're not going to go into that. But uh, for, for an ellipse, it's always less than 1, 0.99999, as close as you want to be. So here's a problem um, to calculate here. Suppose we're, we know that the aphelion and perihelion distance for the Earth are these numbers. These are from a table you can find at NASA uh, website, 152.1 times 10 to the 6 kilometers and 147.1 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. And we want to know what the value of E is. Well, to calculate E, we need the number for C and we need the number for A. If you look at this diagram, is it reasonable to you that if uh, I have 152.1 times 10 to the 6, the aphelion distance, I'll go up here just a little bit, that would be from this right side to the sun, the aphelion distance, and then 147.1 would be from the sun to the perihelion point. This ellipse is much more elliptical than the Earth's uh, orbit, but um, we can use that, uh, that drawing. So for the case of the Earth, we would have that A plus C is this longer distance, 152.1 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. A gets us from the aphelion point to the center. C gets us to the sun. What expression, what calculation could we use for the distance of perihelion from this point P to the focus where the sun is. Well, the full length to the center is A. This distance is C. So it's A minus C gives us the perihelion 
distance, 147.1, and I need to slide up a little bit, 147.1 times 10 to the 6. So concentrating too much on my diagram here, but hopefully you see this. A plus C, that's our aphelion distance, the distance away from the sun. A minus C is the distance from the sun to the perihelion point. What would happen if I would add these two equations? So I'm going to add the two left sides. I get 2a. And if I add the two right sides, I get 249.2 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. Divide both sides by 2, and we can determine that the value for the semi-major axis for the uh, case of the Earth, well, and I need to add a little bit better, 152 and 147, that's 299.2. Divide that by 2, and now I get the number I more expect, 149.6 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. That's the semi-major axis for the Earth's orbit. And to find the eccentricity, we now divide the uh, C distance by the A distance. We don't have the C distance yet. How would you suggest we find the value for C if we know the value for A? Well, we can use either one of these uh, expressions. I'm going to substitute A into the calculation um, up here. So we'll have 152.1 times 10 to the 6 minus 149.6 times 10 to the 6. That will be the value for C. And the value of C that uh, I came up with was 2.5 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. And now we're ready to calculate the eccentricity. So 2.5 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. It is important that these two numbers have the same units. 149.6 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. The units of kilometers cancel. I don't need to bother putting 10 to the 6 into the calculator. It's both numerator and denominator. You ought to check this on your calculator. 2.5 divided by 149.6, and we get 0 0.0167 for the eccentricity of the uh, Earth's orbit. It is good for us that we're nearly on a circular path around the sun. Our temperature is not dominated by our changing distance away from the sun. Our, our changing distance away from the sun is a small number, how much it changes, and it does not dominate the seasons. You should read in an astronomy textbook or ask your instructor. Uh, it's not whether the Earth is close to the sun or far away that controls the seasons. It's the tilt of the Earth. In fact, in Nebraska, northern hemisphere, we have winter in January. And it turns out that the Earth is near to the sun in January. Um, so it's definitely the tilt of the Earth that controls our seasons. Now let's do another uh, case here. Let's suppose we are interested in the perihelion and aphelion distances for Mars, and someone tells us the eccentricity of the orbit and gives us a value for the uh, uh, semi-major axis for Mars. How could we go about finding the perihelion aphelion distances? Well, our perihelion distance, just from the previous work that we've done, is A minus C. And aphelion is A plus C. So we're given the value for A. Somehow we have to find a value for C. Well, we can use the relationship for eccentricity again. Eccentricity is C divided by A. If I multiply both sides by A, then A times the eccentricity will give us the value for C, the distance from the center of the ellipse to the focus where the sun is. So if we do this for the case of Mars, 0 0.094 times 227.9 times 10 to the 6, you should check this on your calculator. I came up with 21.31 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. 
And now having the value for C and the value for A, we can do these two calculations. Uh, if I spell perihelion correctly. For perihelion, I need to do 227.9 times 10 to the 6 minus 21.31 times 10 to the 6. You should do this on your own calculator, but I came up with 206.6 .6 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. For aphelion, we're doing A plus C. Here's the value for A. Here's our value for C. Again, check this on your calculator. But for aphelion, I came out with 249. 0.2 times 10 to the 6 kilometers. Now it's a little bit interesting here to take an uh, examination of these. What percent change is this from perihelion to aphelion? So if I'd subtract these two numbers and then divide by perihelion, I would find that the percent change is 21%. Mars changes its distance by 21%. It's 21% farther away at its aphelion compared to its perihelion distance. Um, and that's, uh, that's significant. It does play a role in the weather on Mars as to whether Mars is at aphelion or perihelion. I'm not going to go into that in, in this video. Um, so this is the case for Mars, how much uh, the distance changes. For the case of the Earth, we have those numbers on the previous page, and I've worked out the percentage. 3.4% is the change in distance, how much further away we are at perihelion compared to aphelion for the case of the Earth orbiting the Sun. Uh, Mars has a more elliptical orbit. Earth has a more circular orbit, nearer to uh, zero eccentricity than the 0.09 for of uh, eccentricity for Mars. That's where we'll stop this video. Um, ellipses have two foci. The sun is at one focus. Half of the major axis is labeled A. It's called the semi-major axis. C is the distance from the center to the uh, focus. And we have the eccentricity defined as C divided by A. Ask your instructor if you have questions on this material.